I'm Mitch, Mitch Kellaway. Um, there's nothing behind me. And um, I'm a writer, and I'm an editor, and um, I'm a journalist, and <laughs> I had to think about it, but. Um, yeah. But I'm not, I'm not a techie, and I'm not a gamer. Um, but I'm here because I have a book project that I'm working on. Um, about transgender people and the internet. Tentatively titled Trans, underscore, an anthology of trans people and the internet. Um, so I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit right now about the project. It's probably gonna take maybe, maybe a couple years, I would like to say a year and a half before I, we actually see daylight um, on the project, um, partly because it's so big um it's become it's taken on quite a life of its own but let me let me backtrack a little bit actually let me tell you a little bit more about myself um i like i said i work in editing and writing um i review books i work with a small publisher an indie uh called transgress press and we publish we're fairly new we've been around for almost three years now uh we publish We've only published works about and by transgender people, uh, although we are breaking into non-trans queer people next year. Um, so I kind of have this background. Uh, last year, I co-edited an anthology just about trans men's life experiences, um, not, not about medical experiences, but more about familial and social experiences, being fathers and friends and mentors and stuff like that. Um, ironically titled Manning Up. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's kind of my background. So um, I finished that book, and then um, I certainly have enough on my plate, but my brother, who is my identical sibling, um, is a web developer. His name's Harlan Kellaway, and uh, he approached me with the idea for a new book. He has this tech side to him, um, we're both trans, both transgender men, um, which maybe I should kind of define my terminology here. Um, I'm not, for me, being a transgender man means that I was assigned a female gender at birth and I transitioned um, and I live as a man. Uh, not every trans person goes through a medical transition, I should say that. But anyways, um, so he came to me about this idea. He was a member of the first trans hack, which was the first hackathon for transgender and genderqueer people um, and he now he literally yesterday moved to Palo Alto to like take on this web developing job and I really miss him um, and so we were like okay let's make an anthology together so we had this nugget of an idea that he and I growing up we're in our mid-twenties it was kind of inescapable growing up to, for us, especially as young trans people, to notice that the internet has had, perhaps I could say a disproportionate effect on the lives of a lot of trans people. Like it, it's, I'll, pro I'll get more into what, why I think that is, but it's, the internet has been so integral to a lot of transgender people's uh, individual lives, helping them come out and, and see themselves, and also trans people collectively organizing themselves um, and collaborating. So we thought there's a lot of interesting stories to tell there. Why don't we encourage people to submit them to a book? It's not an academic book. It's people talking about their lived experiences with the internet. Um, only trans people writing and genderqueer people, non-binary people, so nobody who's not trans contributing. Uh, that was really important to us because uh, if you just think, look at the history kind of, of of trans books or research, a lot of it's been done by non-trans people. Um, and only trans editors, um, only talking about trans topics, so it's also not trans people writing about the internet, but ha it has nothing to do with trans people, what they're writing about. So, um, very specific topic. Um, But we're like, let's make this book. It's going to happen. Um, we're, we're only two men. 
And I think the first, I'm kind of telling you the story of how this book came to be. Um, we, we saw immediately, we're going to have, we're going to have to have a, a, you know, women or women join us um, because it would be really uneven to kind of develop an anthology about trans people um, without uh, feminine or female input. Um, so we, it's interesting because the, the internet helped us pull this book together um, and that's, it kind of in its own way illustrates how trans people have been able to use the internet to build stuff that would never have been possible. Um, and I, I think because I'm not, I'm not a gamer, I'm not techie, I think, I always think about publishing as, as a, an example of what I'm talking about. You know, uh, probably a decade ago, I wouldn't have been able to work for a small press that was publishing just, pretty much just transgender writers on transgender topics. We have all trans staff. Um, and the only reason that really became possible was because of the kind of revolution in publishing that the internet made possible. Um, you know, self-publishing and small publishers are able to print now because you don't need the upfront capital that large publishers have to be able to print a bunch of books and then store them. Now we can do print on demand because of the internet. Um, and I've observed, even within the last few years, uh, trans people really taking that those things that the internet has developed and using them for their own means. So interestingly enough, we were looking for a female co-editor and I was aware of another publisher, this small indie called Bayuti Publishing, which just publishes transgender women of color um, and is run by a trans woman of color. Uh, and I had donated to her crowdfund and then that's how we got talking. And um, you know, she, she was made possible, her project was made possible because of this whole print on demand thing. Um, and I was just like, I'm working on this project, clearly you know about editing, would you consider joining? And her name's Nina Malaya. She's an editor with Bayouti Publishing. Uh, she joined the project. And it turns out she knows a lot about technology too. So um, she's actually a librarian in Canada. So now we got our team. And we're putting together the first anthology about transgender people on the internet. Um, so why, who cares? Why, why is this interesting? an interesting book? Why is this a book worth making? Um, none of us doubted this is a book worth making. And we instantly got a huge response from people when we put the thought out there people saying why hasn't this been thought of earlier um, yeah and um, so when I think about how the internet has affected me as a trans person it's almost it's impossible for me to imagine seeing myself coming out researching information about health care that I needed without the internet being available, without the internet being there. Um, and there was a study recently done, I think, a couple years ago by GLSEN, the Gay Lesbian Education Network, about how LGBT people, so not just trans people, but queer and queer people who are also trans, and all use the internet, but they found particularly trans youth and trans people use the internet to do more of their online, their healthcare research than other groups. Um, and there's a particular trend within the trans community to go online to look for um, if a trans person wants to medically transition information about hormones or information about gender confirming surgery, stuff like that. So that's one particular way that the trans people who aren't getting their needs met elsewhere, let's say by a doctor who just has this information available, um, have been able to help each other and a lot of people, especially in the early days of the commercial internet, taking it upon themselves to gather that kind of information and put it out there for other trans people who are looking for it. Um, and then there's just the community building. I can't confirm this, this is totally unsubstantiated, this is me uh, surmising, but I imagine the internet, the presence of the internet has helped more trans people realize they were trans. It sounds funny, like more trans people have, have come out since the internet is my guess because it's really hard. There's it's hard to see yourself as a transgender person if you don't see other transgender people in your world. And if you're isolated, or even if you're not isolated, but they're just, let's say there isn't 
a trans person around to reflect you, um, you're much less likely to recognize that about yourself. And I'm, I mean, even still today, there's plenty of people who, who live a whole life. Maybe they are trans, but they never, it never clicks for them. Um, the internet allows trans people to see themselves and see themselves sooner. Um, and also see possibly, you know, like, there's a lot of negative stories in, in the world, and there used to be even more, and there's more and more positive ones. See some positive stories about being trans, so this is like a possibility for them. Um, so that's something that the internet has done for people. And also the ability to collaborate and find other people. Um, in the earlier days, and still, there was forums. Uh, I'm thinking Susan's Place, and I, there's a bunch of forums, maybe T-Box, stuff like that. Um, uh, yeah, so, and actually nowadays you'll see a lot of people crowdfunding, uh, let's say, healthcare needs, which, like the, the talker before me, I have reservations about people needing to raise their healthcare money uh, on the internet, but uh, people, a lot of trans people use the internet for that too. So there's, there's a lot of intersections that trans people might have with the internet. Um, there's even more than that, you know, family building, um, sex work that came up a bunch, um, dating, uh, trans people finding jobs in the tech industry, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so clearly there's uh, plenty of content and there's material that you can gather. That's something that's important for making a book. Uh, we got our team. Um, we put out this call for submissions. We decided we're going to collect proposals select among the proposals and then have those people write the essays. We didn't want people putting a lot of upfront labor into writing an essay and then having us reject it. Um, you know, kind of, we were kind of conscious about how much work we want to ask of people. Um, so we just went through our first round of proposals. And so we're kind of still in this, uh, this nascent period, this kind of embryonic period for the book. Um, and thanks to Ash for kind of noticing it and, and, and uh, inviting me to talk about it, uh, it's hard to talk about a book that hasn't taken shape yet, and the only literally thing that I know about it is I believe it's going to be big. <laughs> considering the amount of, that's my belief, but the, considering the amount of response we got to it um, in comparison to other book projects I've worked on, um, probably almost 100 proposals the first round. And I say the first round because we opened a second round, um, which was pretty possibly easy to foresee. There's, there's gaps. Um, most of the people we collected were people who were on the internet. You know, we put out an online uh, call for submissions. We tried to do some physical ones, like posting them around town, but I live in Boston. My brother formerly lived in New York. Nina lives in Toronto. So very, it's very limited ability we have to post physically. Uh, so we definitely had some gaps in people who don't really have access to the internet. Um, and other gaps for other reasons. We put a particular call out for people who, um, more trans feminine people, more people who are affected by trans misogyny, um, any kind of experience with intersections. We got a lot of, I believe, white people. Um, we got more masculine identified or male people responding. Um, and, but a lot more non-binary and genderqueer people than I might have expected. That was a real um, surprise, a good surprise to find a lot of that. Um, and we got a, some of the similar topics. So I knew there would be a lot of, I kind of found myself or I found my community or I found my friends through the internet or I saw myself. The internet was the first time I really saw other people who were like me and I, it clicked for me. We got a lot of that. Um, but we got also a lot of really interesting stuff. Um, so like, um, gosh, I had a bunch in my head that I was thinking of and now I have to think, you know, we got, we got a one, each of the kind of major social media outlets. We got at least one person who was talking about Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, uh, YouTube, um, we got big data, we have like future of tech, like transhuman, like way out there stuff, and uh, online shopping, and watching pornography online, and a lot of community building, so activist stuff. 
um, people were just really psyched, like really, really psyched to um, get, um, to talk about this and have an, not just an outlet, because I think a lot of people actually do talk a lot about what the internet means to trans people. People blog about it, tweet about it, but um, this kind of formal format, um, a lot of people who aren't, I don't think, identify as writers who just wanted, really had something to say, which is exciting to me as an editor and a writer to inspire other people to write about this stuff. Um, yeah, so right now we, we closed our first call for proposals. The people, the first round of writers, we probably accepted 70 writers. Um, some of them are inevitably going to fall off. That's what happens with an anthology. But uh, So January 1st, we'll get our first round of essays. And uh, we have a second call for proposals out right now that I think is due December 1st. And so those people will have three months to write their essays. Um, probably like 500, 2,500 words. Um, I hope that was interesting to you to hear a little bit of behind the process. Some people like hearing behind the process of, of pulling an anthology together. Actually, I was... I'm going to be a little tangential here because um, I was at just a, a get-together and this woman was so fascinated that this was my second anthology that I was putting together and another friend had put out her own book and she's like, you can just do this. You can just decide that you're going to put together this book, edit this anthology, put out a call for submissions, gather people, and then print it or find a publisher. And the lucky thing is because I work with the publisher and Nina works with the publisher, we're pretty sure this is going to get published. Um, I'd like to see where, who else, and what else it, it could possibly, who else it could be published by. But um, I'm really, we're lucky to feel like we're sure it's gonna be printed. Um, yeah, you can just do that. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, the, partly because the internet's made that possible. If, if, and the last, very last thing we could do is, sell, you know, kind of self-publish it if we wanted. Um, and we are going to do a crowdfunder because we want to pay all of our writers at least an honorarium um, and pay um, Nina for her work. So, yeah. Let me see. I had some notes. I think I got to the end of my notes. I know that was kind of informal. Just blah, blah, blah off the top of my head about this project. I just, I love this project and I love how excited people are about it. Um, I'm curious to see if, if the readership for this kind of book would extend beyond the trans com community. And I would like to see that for, for non-trans people to understand the unique effects that the internet can have on specifically marginalized groups. Um, I, I, I'm really curious to see, but that's kind of a year and a half, or two years in the future right now. It's just really... Surprising and not surprising to see how huge of a response we've had to the project. Thanks.